<laughs> it's been a while, but I said I would make more videos, right? The best things are worth waiting for, and well, I don't really have any excuses, so enough about me and my infinite number of hiatuses. Let's get into the video. In the first part of the series, we looked at Alexander Joy Cartwright Jr. and Matthew C. Perry. Needless to say, I didn't order my videos in the order of their appearances in the show. In episode 5, Artistic Anarchy, we are introduced to Hishikawa Moronobu. It starts with a little introduction by Manzo Sakami, a member of the secret police and part-time narrator. He refers to how Van Gogh had a deep admiration for an ukiyo painting he had seen in Paris, an interesting way to start the connection between him and Sunflowers, Sunflowers obviously being a central image and theme in the show. I love how they were able to connect that with a famous painter like Van Gogh. See that rhyme? Ooh! Alright, back to Hishikawa Moronobu. He lived from 1618 to 1694, but some have placed his birth date to as late as 1625. Obviously, we have to remember the show warns us to not take it as historically accurate, since Cartwright and Perry both lived in the 1800s. It would not be possible for the three of them to all be living at the same time. Moronobu was famous for popularizing the ukiyo genre of woodblock prints and paintings. The artists of this genre produce work from such subjects as female beauties, kabuki actors, and sumo wrestlers. I wouldn't think of anything where female beauties and sumo wrestlers are brought together, two contrasting appearances to say the least. Although nothing is known about Moronobu's personality and demeanor, the show makes him out to be rather flamboyant, erratic, and androgynous-like. He himself personifies the ukiyo genre by not being entirely male or female in his appearance or behavior. Moronobu's father was a dyer and a gold and silver thread brocade artisan in Hodamura, Awa province near Edo Bay. In present day, this is Kyonan, Chiba prefecture. Moronobu learned his father's craft, and then he moved to Edo and studied Tosa and Kano style painting. Tosa was founded in the Muromachi period, which is in the 14th and 15th centuries. Its paintings are characterized by areas of flat, opaque color enclosed by simple outlines, where drawing is precise and conventional. Kano style is one of the most famous schools of Japanese painting. It was a dominant style from the late 15th century until the Meiji period, which began in 1868. At the time, the school had divided into many different branches. As the artists broadened their range, the distinction between Tosa and Kano became less clear. With the skills he learned from his father, as well as from his studying of these two schools of painting, Moronobu was more than capable of attaining success when he turned to ukiyo. By the 1670s, he became the most important ukiyo printmaker. He produced more than 100 illustrated books, maybe 150. Unfortunately, many of them were unsigned, so it is difficult to attribute them to him. Also, very few of his single sheet prints have survived, and most, if not all, are unsigned. There's also some erotic album prints among these. For those of you who like that. Moronobu was not the founder of ukiyo, but he assimilated incomplete ukiyo designs by previous artists. He was the one who created the first truly mature form of ukiyo and set the standards for future artists. His work is held in several museum collections around the world and in the Library of Congress. It's still comical to see how he's portrayed in the show. He's just so childlike and obsessed with his art, but that's what great artists are obsessed. The artist is also prone to escapism, as in the show, he expresses desire to go to Europe. Unfortunately, he never gets to Europe and his painting of Fu is confiscated. Eventually, Van Gogh sees that same painting in the future and it served as inspiration for his sunflower art. Manzo Sakami concludes by saying that some facts are left out of the history books. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, part 3 won't take another year and a half to make and release, but there will be a part 3, as well as some other videos. For those of you who've been watching for years, I appreciate it, because... Man, I've been on a lot of hiatuses, but I promise you, I'll always find my way back. See you guys in the next one.